Well, folks, welcome back to another hunt for the Sisters of War. My name is Rudy. You're watching Timmy's Emporium. Today, the patron over here, old Brennan M. BM. Says, Rudy, let's do a little one more, one more Brothers War box opening. I know, I'm like the mega, I'm like the latest person to the party for the set. And, you know, I went through a crazy Q4, and you guys know, Magic 30, all the shenanigans. But, you know, this is a fun product, man. I haven't, I haven't been able to open a lot of these other ones like you guys have out there. I know it's been a while, but man, this is a fun product to open. Like, even if you don't hit the super tough to pull serialized cards, just the overall, the pull rates and those those schematic artifacts. Oh, wait, this one is the, oh, this is the backwards version where the commons and uncommons are in the front. I hate how they change every time. It drives me crazy. Silex, first rare, or first mythic. We'll, we'll track mythics. Everybody gets mad when I don't. Look at that. Root path, mythic number two. Starting all pretty strong there. Self-assembly, the old bobble. Can you believe I... Oh, look at that. Thorn, great pull. And I was told that the Transformer Mythics that you pull here, essentially, unless it's shattered glass, textured, extended, ribbed for her pleasure, apparently doesn't mean much. So I'll kind of just stick those way to the top there. And, okay. So that's about it for um, kind of the Mythic thing. That's our little intro there. And Overall, I'm really surprised. These boxes are holding up. They're around, what, 220 to about 230 with taxes and shipping on TCG Player? Hasn't really, wow, really another Silex? Hasn't really been any crashes or up. Hasn't really been much movement at all. Um, hasn't really been a huge second wave or any reprints of the collector boxes. There's a foil, Transformer Mythic. And boy, there, God, that Shooting Star, man. That is a gorgeous card. Those artifacts, man. I just, I don't see an era in the future, where this particular product just collapses. I, I just don't see it. <laughs> Look at that stone brain. The amount of, hey, purple wizard. The amount of mythics that are actually holding value on this, not to mention the serialized, all the retro artifacts, just the amount of mythics. There's a good, there's a couple rares too. They're doing pretty well. And there's just, there's a lot of good expected value from this product. And which is surprising now that, you know, it's not the most recent product anymore. And we've had other, well, I guess standard wise. You know, we've had other Magic releases since, so the flow of money's moved forward, but the product's actually holding up quite well. And I think that's a really good sign. I know, hey, I love the wordplay. Urza's, Urza's Workshop. I love the wordplay, man. Jalum Tomb. Sigil. And look at that gorgeous Volt. Man. Mm-mm-mm. God, it's so nice. And again, another Transformer Fancy Schmancy. And the Pike. So, I guess serialized card is what? One every, ugh, um, every case of six boxes, I think? So you get maybe one serialized a case? Is that, is that kind of the, the vibe I've heard from others? Um, I haven't really been able to witness that, but you know, hey. Look at that beautiful flask there, everybody. Millstone, great artwork. Platinum Angel, man. God, that used to be such a big deal for a card, man. And of course, a Temporal Anchor. Yeah, it's amazing how Wizards can make some products and the card quality is just so amazing. And then other products come out and just everything from centering to ink, contrast, damage on the cards, the edges. And look, and again, I don't mean to be a bad person, Rob. I've met you in real life, Rob. I'm not a fan of the artwork. I don't know if it just looks funky and washed out on this particular printing or the way they stretched it, but I'm not a big fan. Still love you, bro. Drum. <laughs> Double tap on the drum. And of course, Spiker Rooney, and of course, another flipping Transformer Mythic. And the. See, this is where the value. Like, there's. Like, these things have to be some sort of value or special thing in the future. And, you know, hey, the next standard set, Phyrexian All will be 69, is coming soon. And guess what? We haven't seen any serialized reprints or anything weird or anything like that. You know, that's a good sign. We see something sticking out of the back there. Hopefully, it's a good card. We got Aviator. We got the old Raker. We got the Lantern. We got Talisman, <laughs> Char Belcher, that used to be a fun card. Tyrant, and Legions to Ashes. You know, I, I, I was in the impression all these, these foil Transformer mythics that you get in every pack was a really big deal, and apparently it's not. It's either literally shattered glass, crazy textured with the purple craziness, or it's worthless. That's pretty much what I was told. Tyrant! All right, and Hellkite, Self-Assembler, Millstone. Unwinding Clock, Greg Hart, Sharpshooter, and ooh, beautiful Thorn there. Very nice. I love artifacts, man. That was when I was when I was wee little Snapper Rudy, when young Rudy, 
Rudy, you're like 10. I know, I know. But when I was even younger than I am now, and I had more hair and all that stuff, artifacts and lands, man. Nice little fauna. The artifacts and lands is what drew me into magic and got me really obsessed with about it. Oh, chromatic star. Look at that. And the old scrap. Humanity's ally. Huh? So <clears throat> I didn't realize all the Transformers are mythics. And a golden. This is a product that seems to be actually surprisingly holding up. I even noticed the set and draft boxes have held up extremely well. So I thought that was a pretty uh, a pretty positive sign. We got Siege Veteran. We got Automaton. That's pretty decent. There's, a, there's actually, like, this is one of the standard sets where a lot of the Mythics are $10 plus. And we even have a couple rares that are actually more than, like, $2, $3 a card. Which is a very nice sign now that it's... Oh, God, look at that key to the city. Look at that art, man. Dude, that is amazing. Blaster, Transform, and of course, the old Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter. Or is it Chopter? Thopter? Oh, man. So like I said, I don't know if this is considered a good or bad box opening, Brennan, but uh, it's fun to open, man. What an absolute great time to do this, man. Mindbreaker. Enjoyable, man. Ritualist. Beautiful staff, man. Who did that, Samuel? That artwork on that staff with that beautiful lady and the hair and the nature. Oh, gorgeous card, man. Bonesaw, very iconic. What was that? What's Bonesaw? Is that Oath of the Gate Watch? Was that Battle for Zen? When or was I selling that? It's Spectre. Mind's Eye. There's a mythic for you. And of course, Transformer and Hostile Negotiations, folks. Very, very cool. All right, last pack of box one here, everybody. Not too much to say here, just kind of enjoying it. I don't get to open this Mistress Foundry. Don't get to open this product very often. I never really got to enjoy it a lot. So I really, uh, I just look for these artifacts. It's all I care about. Ah, the Ivory Tower. I think that's the Ivory Tower artwork that was from the Vault, too. That's really cool, man. And nice little anvil there with imprint. Field Medic. That's a foil one. And another Silence. Wow, really? So that's the end of box one. Three, six, eight actual Mythics. And, of course, I guess a Mythic Transformer in every pack. Go figure. I don't know if that's considered a good or a bad opening, Brennan, it feels pretty normal to me. I don't know if there's certain artifacts. Like, you know, I know like Stoneforge Mystic, some of the, um, but Mox Amber, I know some of the kind of heavier hitting ones are in this set. Maybe if you don't hit that, it's kind of a bust or something. I'm not really sure if prices have stabilized or other ones have moved since the filming of this or by the time you guys watch this video. Um, but I still, you know, hey, the product's not collapsing in price. It's holding up just fine. Bin Grug. Much of progress. Jalum Tomb. Self-assembler. Gorgeous artifact, man. Inspire. See, that's what I'm saying. Oh, God, that reminds me of um, Kaladesh artwork there. Oh, man. It just reminds me of the energy, like the reservoirs and stuff. And Field Medic for, of course, our Transformer and Visions. So to me, it feels like the fact that this product has made it through Q4. And almost we're almost uh, next week or so, we're going to head to February in 2023. And this product, ooh, nice little shield. That's... Uh, I believe this is one of the better mythics in the set, too. During your turn, your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Whenever the old Shield of Akiv attacks... Ah, creating the old 1-1 tokens, huh? That's what it is. Rex is equal to the number of soldiers you control. Okay. So whenever you swing with this bad boy, 4-drop, 3-4, um, you, you get to pump out and copy a bunch of kind of tokens. So after swinging a couple times, this thing's really going to ramp up pretty quick. So I can definitely see where that gets pretty out of control pretty quick if you don't deal with it. And a stunning ivory tower, as always, folks. Millstone. Aether Flux Reservoir. Dude, I can't imagine the price of this card. It feels a serialized throwback, whatever. <laughs> Another Portal Fun. Dude, Brennan. <laughs> I hope you like Portal of Phyrexia. I think you have a play set of four portals, man. Just from this box opening video. I, I hope that's like your favorite flipping art like artifact, dude. That's crazy how many we've gotten of that. Urza's Command. Very, very cool artwork on that. Very neat to see. Hostile Negotiations. We got the old Wire Surgeons. The old Bone Saw throwback. Ah, uh, the Firewalkers known as Swift Footy Boots. And Cloud Key to the City. And we got the Veteran. And a nice, gorgeous, gorgeous unwinding clock. Wow. God. I, like I, no matter how many times I see a retro artifact, especially with that Shooting Star foiling, man. I just, it stops me, man. It stops me in my tracks, folks. I just, I can't get enough of it. Hey, Tamer of the old Mock Fawa? Fawa? Have not, oh, that's a rare. That was a Planeswalker. That is not a Planeswalker. Okay. That, don't remember seeing that card. 
Thanos. Hey, oh man, Thanos looking so, some high mileage on him. Old man Thanos, should I say, am I right? Another flask, another little assembly worker over here. We've got the anvil again, and of course, Transformers and a toy maker. I don't, so is anybody, I, I, I wanna, I wanna, you know, we're later in the video, we're 10 minutes in, so I can start getting more Rudy and saying inappropriate things, but does anybody play with the Transformer cards? Is anybody all about, I mean, obviously if you get the, the shatter glass crazy ones, but I mean, is anybody doing anything with those Transformer cards? Like, are they playing with them? Or are, they, are people collecting those things? Because I looked online and all these Transformer cards are damn near worthless. Oh man, look at that. Look at that maze mind tomb. Now that's a cool look. Oh, that's just a rare, not even a mythic. I, I just want to know that. I was like, I don't know. Are the, are the Transformers, did it turn out? Was it worth it? Is everybody excited? Is it? Is everybody like, oh, Rudy, you were wrong. Transformer cards make the set. Is everybody, is that still a thing? Painful. Blast Furnace Hellkite. Ooh, coating. Look at that. That's a cool artifact. Say, hey, there's the Firewalkers throwback. Door to Nothingness. Infamous card. And there's our first Shattered Glass. Obviously, it's not a foil textured or anything, but... That's the first one we've seen out of both boxes in Door Nothingness. Man, holy crap. Dude, to get one of those shattered glass textured things, that must be like, holy cow, I haven't even seen one in person. Those things have got to be super difficult to pull. Spider, Avenger, we got the old Wellspring. Coming through the old Millstone again, Thorn, great card. And of course, Muscle and a Blast Zone. I like the artwork better. I wasn't a fan of the original Blast Zone artwork. I think um, that was War of the Spark. Uh, that Blast Zone artwork does look better, though. I know it amazes me just as much as it amazes you all folks. I remember all these little tidbits and stories, all these cards and these sets over the years. I love that command. Beautiful art. And, hey, another shield. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> Hexavis. So I'm assuming this is like, you know, Tetravis, you know, but Hex, you know, you get six counters instead of four. I'm assuming this is a, a throwback kind of meme card, which is kind of cute. Ivory Tower. Adaptive Automaton. Optimus Prime. And of course, ending on an ooh, what is this? I haven't seen this bad. Urza, Chief Artificer, huh? Whoa. Six drop, four, five. Affinity for the old artifact. Oh, artifact creatures. And creature control of menace. At the beginning of your end step, create uh oh. Are we pumping out tokens each turn? Create an oh oh wireless constructs with token. Uh, this creature gets one for each artifact. Okay, at the beginning of So you create a token. Whoa. And how many was that? Six, seven? Six drop. Oh, that seems like a spicy little powerhouse. See, cards that always just... Any, ever since... What was that? What was that stupid ooze or scute mob or that little green card from years ago in Modern? Anytime I see cards... Underground River. Iconic. Anytime I see... Oh, cute. Um, any form of cards that pump out tokens or ramp up, the more turns they're in, always get me uneasy for power level. I feel like it's super easy. Ooh, very nice. It's super easy for the game to just, you, you lose and the game to get out of control. Those to those cards that pump out, was it Scavenging Ooze maybe? Is that what I'm thinking of? Skew Mob, some some card, I remember that. Uh, Mind Breaker, Devastation, Inspector. Those cards always scare me, man, because if you don't deal with them within a turn or two, that's it, the game's done. Well of Lost Dreams, Sonic Spy, and Siege Veteran. All right, folks, two packs left. Again, I can't tell if these are considered... I'm sure the comment section will either light up and say the patron got crushed or the patron did good. I can't really tell. It feels normal to me. One with the multiverse. It's an eight-drop mid... A little cliche on the name. Uh, Mishra, Eminent One. Very cool. That reminds me of the, the Garth One-Eyed card. The artwork looks very similar to that to me. Got the old Harder Rooney. Another Bone Saw schematic. Lantern Throwback. Strategist. And a Helm of the Host. Nice. Beautiful. See, I feel like... It doesn't even have to be serialized. I feel like the this is the particular hits you want. Like, you want the retro artifacts that are foil and done up like that. I feel like long-term, that's where it's at. Because it, it almost, I don't want to say it reminds me of, like, the masterpieces from Call of Dash, because those are just second to none. But it, it kind of has a similar special vibe, at least to me. Coating. Ooh, Worm Coil. There's a nice one. I haven't seen that one. Ratchet over here. And ending on an anvil. Brennan, thanks for being a very kind patron. Hope you uh, enjoy all the cards. Everything is heading your way at this time. And uh, final comments to everybody out there. Um, Brothers War is, is, is a phenomenal product. You know, I think if, out of looking back in 2022, I would rate probably Kamigawa, Brothers War, and obviously Double Masters, but that's a shoe in But as far as standard, regular products, I, I really think Kamigawa and Brothers War, in my opinion, were really the, the real stories of 2022. The summer, obviously, we had the big boom 
of obviously double masters, then with a big bus with Boulder's Gate. So you had a very volatile summer. But, and of course, streets of Barry Manilow and, you know, didn't really go to zero, but it's just been rejected by the market. But Brothers War, you know, the fact that the new Phyrexian standard set didn't does not have serialized cards. Jumpstart didn't have, 2022 didn't have serialized cards, you know. Dominari Remastered didn't have serialized cards. I mean, I know we're kind of, I got to have another video on that, which you guys may have already seen by the time you watch this, but, you know, Wizards is not overdoing the serialized cards. We've only seen serialized artifacts in this one set. So, to me, I remain really, like, the fact you can get these boxes for 230 bucks with taxes and shipping on TCG Play right now, and there's not more of this product coming, at least from what I understand from distribution or anything, you know, that's a really good price for a product that has the potential of something this special. And, of course, even if it doesn't, like I was just telling you all, look, look at the regular cards that don't have the serialized. I mean, even the ones that are just the retro foil. Look at this. Look in the camera. I know a lot of you are listening. But look at that. Just even without serialized, man, they just they feel they feel special. They feel good. I still think the Transformer thing is the biggest stupid middle finger, but a lot of you all like the Transformer, and i got to respect that. I was just... I, I was always a big Transformer fan. I just don't think it fits in the set. I think Transformer should have a secret lair or a fun little mini Transformer, maybe an Infinity types product, but I just think it's goofy in Brothers War, but whatever. Anyways, I just, that's my final thoughts is what a good product, man. You know, the fact this product is holding up makes me happy and gives me some positive bullishness moving forward because, man, what a fun, unique product. And it's it's holding above 200 a collector box very strongly. Not even a chance of collapsing below 200, which is a great sign. And, you know, I am very surprised at the value of these serialized cards. They are holding up really, really well. So, yeah, laying that out there, man. So, folks, I don't know. I would definitely have this exposure to the set. If you're into the sealed product and collecting rare things and, you know, you're in the CCG world, I definitely think sealed product of uh, Brothers War. Um, I would probably say the set and collector... I still would stay away from Brothers of War Jumpstart. I'm skeptical of Brothers of War Draft and obviously Brothers of War Commander. So all these supplemental things I'd be very cautious on. But the Collector, this, the, this particular product, the Collector is king because you can only get serialized cards in the Collector. And they're loaded with these artifacts in retro. So set boxes obviously are a lot cheaper. Um, for more enjoyment and pack cracking, definitely. But like I said, these jumpstart, these drafts, and commander of this particular set, I'd probably stay away from for until, and again, hey, maybe they clear in some of that stuff and we can go in at a different cost basis and, well, the conversation can change. So uh, have a beautiful day, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I appreciate the honor and the privilege to entertain, report the news, and share mouth hugs. Have a great day.